Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, Couch to Rally episode. It's after the dinner, Rick. Uh, I'm still in Kenyan and I'm kind of recovering mentally and physically from all uh, what happened over the three days of Dunarik Rally. And um, I have to say, I, I, I must thank everyone in the team. They were absolutely amazing. Uh, every single member of the team, there are a lot of volunteers. Uh, they had put so much effort into the rally that it's, it's just mind blowing. If you, you kind of see the price tag, but once you actually see how much effort it is in order to put the rally together, you will completely understand. I mean, only for that is worth to go to some rally. So I had a, a lot of questions about rally and about how the bike went and all that. And in this episode, I would like to start with just the general information about the rally and how it works and what it is really. So um, what was the Dinaric Rally? Um, it's a cross country rally, uh, off-road rally, um, navigation we can say where you basically go on in a certain stages each day you have it that's one stage and you just go there and you try to raise other people it was really interesting that because the whole team is engaged in conservation and environment and all that they have to uh, do it in such a way that they minimize the impact on the environment and i think that is one of the very interesting and unique points on the Dinaric is that A, it just shows you wonderful landscape and mountains and all that, but it also, the, how they pick the tracks and how they pick where you go is all designed in such a way that you actually are not pissing off people, you are not um, damaging the private property or public property. And, you know, what, once you ride those roads and those tracks, I mean, I have been riding after the whole, you know, the small bikes went and quad went, and you barely see that there is any damage. And it rains once, and the whole thing is like it was before the rally. And I think that's really unique. I spoke about this with Peritz, the organizer, for almost an hour, and they really, really tried very hard to melt this complete opposite kind of parts of the society where we as the bikers we want to ride off-road and then you have this the ecological people and, and movement and public which is kind of like well shouldn't we protect the nature and what they really tried hard with the PR campaign and everything to actually meld these things together and I think that they did absolutely amazing job okay so one of the main questions people ask me all the time where Okay, so what do I need and how can I participate? So obviously you need money. Uh, you need to pay about 350 euros. That's what I paid. Um, that was the last minute price. So you can get better price if you pay an early bird. Then what you need is a motorcycle. Now, people were kind of asking, do I need to have a special bike? Do I need to have a race bike? Do I need to have a small bike or anything no you need a bike which is gonna be in a good enough condition to survive three days beating and you need the motorcycle which has a enough protection and a, enough ground clearance to actually go through some serious off-road that's all what you need it's not about cc's it's not about suspension it's not about anything you know and the thing is that you are not well, you're not aiming to win it. If, you, if you're aiming to win it, then you need a different bike than if you just want to participate. Um, what kind of experience uh, do you need in order to participate in this rally? So the Narek was um, amateur rally, they, they put it that way. So there is no qualification for this rally. So really you just need a money and a bike and you just go and race. Um, in terms of uh, experience, uh, how to put it, uh, the thing is that after the first day I came here and I said I'm not going to race because I'm not going to ever win anyway. Uh, but after the first day you start racing, it's just how it goes. So um, what, in terms of experience what I may suggest is that 
If you can ride a Trans Euro Trail comfortably without any uh, problems, then you have enough skill to come here and to race the rally. No issues at all. If you have a skill where you struggle on Trans Euro Trail or you're just uh, not very comfortable riding, then it's going to be very hard. You're going to push yourself to a lot of limits. But anyway, it's not limiting. You can just paddle along as long as you want, really, um, if you don't really care about the placement. Now, one thing to mention with the skill and what kind of skills you need, the thing is, the heavier the bike, the more skill you need because the organizers will put you through some terrain which is going to be quite tricky especially on a big bike so on the Tenere I have sections where I dropped the bike I struggled through it and you know all that and everything was dry now we have been having no rain at all if it would be raining it would be a little bit different so that's about the participation not really much now one thing which I would like to talk about a little bit more is safety and that's one of the things which you actually pay for um, when you're going uh, to do the rally so the medics are present at all like the, you have at least two three medics which are mobile uh, in the uh, four by fours and they basically go around and uh, see you the each rider has a GPS tracker which you, I have it here in my harness and uh, that sends your current location all the time using a uh, SIM card to the organizers and they have um, like, a, like a plan where everybody is on the map. They know exactly at every single time where each rider is and they can track them. You also get a special uh, timing devices. So on a bike they put little tiny um, device which will trigger uh, and measure your time. Another thing is that the organizers will close the special stages. I will go uh, back to that's where you race. And um, they will close that for public and uh, they will do as much as possible to basically you have a clean race through the special stages. Now, everything else are public roads. If it's a tarmac or if it's the dirt road like in here, it is still public road. And then you have to keep in mind that you're actually riding there um, on a public road, so there can be a car, and we had a car, I had a car just in the um, you, you can have a cows, I had a cows there, dogs, everything, so you have to count with that in terms of safety, it is really, really important to realize that you are riding on a public roads if it's not a special stage, right? So that's it. Now, in terms of bikes and what bikes are racing, uh, the each rally and you have different rallies around Europe like Hellas and uh, Hispania and all that and they have different structure but always the whole participants are divided into classes so and usually it's up to it's based on cc's of the bike so you have uh, I was for example in bike up to 900 and uh, then you have a big bike which is everything above and then you have 550 uh, class uh, there were special classes for women um, and there were special classes for quads. So basically what you do is you like, okay, I'm going to race this bike, pick the class, register for that class and that's it. Happy days. And then what you do is that all your ranking is basically you're competing against the, the, the class. So that would be the classes. Okay. Navigation on a rally. So there are Two different types of rallies and if you want to know more about rallies actually uh, absolute and major shout outs to ADV to rally Eggle, uh, which kind of get me into this rally anyway uh, she has been covering Dinarik as well she's been racing Dinarik as well she's talking about different rallies and how they work and how the Dinarik is uh, comparing to them because I don't have that experience so let's go back to navigation there are two main types of the rallies or the navigation on the rallies. One is a GPS where you basically get um, a GPS track uh, loaded up into any GPS uh, device and you follow the track, right? Um, 
those tracks will actually have a uh, start and end of special stages. Those stages are timed. They will have points where, uh, for example, you can refuel, you have the points where you can um, get snacks and all that kind of stuff. So the organizers will prepare that. The other way how to navigate the rally is using something which is called Roadbook. And that is kind of a it's a box literally where you have a reel with a paper and it tells you this band is gonna go there there is a bridge there is a ditch and all that kind of stuff it's much more detailed than the GPS track and the road books are usually associated with like a proper rallies right they are like Dakar goes uh, according to the road book Hellas does Hispania I think does as well so um, that's the navigation. The Dinaric was only with the GPS. We got the tracks, loaded it up, and then you just follow. So rules and results. A lot of people are asking about it. Um, so how does that work on the Dinaric? Okay, so because the track is on the public roads, you have to stick to the, pub to the speed limit on the public roads where the speed limits are. So the rule number one, stick to the speed limits. There is obviously not a speed limit of road and that's regardless whether it is on a special stage where you're racing or whether it's just an off-road track. So you can go as nuts as you want. Um, again, with the safety, if you go on a public off-road nuts, you may actually see that there is a cow or there is something and you will be like, oh, bugger. Um, so careful about that, but there's no speed limit on there. Now, you do have a certain time from the time where you start, which is where you go through the gate um, at the start, to finish the race. In terms of the Narek, it was eight hours. So you go, you start your race, and then eight hours counts from that. So we started at eight, and you have to be at four back and go through the finish line. Now that's important because if you don't, then any time above that four o'clock, after those eight hours, is gonna be your penalty for the day. And you don't really want to do that. I had 10 minutes penalty and you can, I mean, 10 minutes in a race is a lot. So um, that's it. Now, another important is cutoff time. So there is a cutoff time at six in the evening and that means that when you're still on the track at six, the race is finished, the race is over. You are supposed to abandon the track and go to the nearest paved road and come back to the, uh, to the camp, uh, to the bivouac. And that's important. So we have two times. We have eight hours that ends at four when we start at eight. And then we have two hours to actually um, get back home and then um, finish it, right? So if you miss all those, then you kind of screw. The important is that the special stages are only the ones which are actually timed. So during those eight hours you drive or ride through the whole day, only the special stages are actually contributing your time for ranking, right? So you only ever have to be really fast during the special stages. How that works is that because the tack, uh, you just see that there is a point where it says start of the special stage, you just ride through it and the technology will just take your time. And then when you exit the special stage, it will record the exit time. And that's basically what happens. You can, if you can, and also the thing is that because the only special stages are timed, you can just arrive to the special stage, you can get a snack, you can eat, you can do whatever you want, and then you start the race. And then after the special stage, you can take rest and, and do that. You don't need to go nuts the whole eight hours. Um, so that's it. Uh, one really important thing, and that was, uh, that's actually thanks to the technology. So let's say that we have a gate where the special stage starts. Um, you're kind of like thinking, oh, I need to take a break or I need to take a piss. Um, 
and then you go past the gate and you're like, oh, screwed. Now you can actually turn around if it's a few meters, go back and that, because if you cross it multiple times, it's gonna record the last time you started the special and then um, it records the time when you exit it. So you can still do that. And then, um, okay, uh, how's the ranking done? Okay. So as I said, only special stages are timed and you will get penalties if you're racing longer than eight hours. So your ranking is based on some of the time of your all special stages plus any penalties you may have. And that needs to be the shortest time, right? So if you finish the first special in five minutes, then third, second and third also in five minutes you have been racing 15 minutes and that's your um, that's your result for the day and any penalties go up to that now if you help someone someone crashed or someone someone bike is broken completely or something like that uh, it needs to be some serious thing and you stop and you help them and you overdo your eight hours um, you can go to the organizers and basically say, okay, well, I have uh, helped someone, this guy and that guy, and uh, I think that uh, that should be uh, voided and the penalty is most of the time voided. So that's it. Um, I think that was in a nutshell about what it is and how the rules are. And um, other thing which I want to do is to basically go uh, through the first day. Um, so let's do that one.